If you couldn't tell, I enjoy the funny little indie game called Ultra Kill. I wanted to make another video on this game and I went on length about the piercer last time and how it might work within our laws of physics. So you know what? I'm making a sequel. This time it's about the shotgun and how it might work. But what is the shotgun in Ultra Kill? It's a double barrel weapon that seems to shoot an orange pellet in a spread shot pattern, great for close range. And if you parry it, it does an explosive shot for pretty consistently high DPS. But how does this weapon work? How can we make this and what works what doesn't and what do we need to fix? Going over to the terminal, its description gets a little bit weird. It's an experimental close range weapon that uses hyper concentrated heat as its projectile. After each shot, the shotgun must be opened allowing for the heat generated by the cores to vent excess heat, stopping them from sort of melting or exploding outright. This process is largely automated, requiring little more from the user than a flick of the wrist. Heat weapons never really caught on as electric weapons are a lot more consistent and they're way more volatile in nature and have strict cooling requirements. But unlike our electric weapons, they don't require a separate projectile, making their ammo truly infinite rather than just practically infinite. The description here is really hard to understand in terms of an engineering or physics mindset. It talks about heat, which really doesn't have a penetrating, sort of any kind of penetrating power, and it explodes when agitated a little too much. The crazy part is I've been trying to really make this work for a couple of days, but in our physics, it doesn't work. So let's break it down. What works, what doesn't, what do we need to do to actually make this work, and what could I modify to make it work? So the description starts talking about hyper-concentrated heat, uh, like thermal energy. You know, on the face of it, it's kind of an interesting theoretical ammo system. But when we actually look at this with a more kind of critical sort of eye and with a physics in mind, it does not work. What is heat? Well, heat is the movement of molecules within a medium such as a solid, gas, liquid, what have you. This makes it so that you kind of have to have a physical piece of matter to even have it exist in the first place. The shot in game looks like it's around an orange projectile and it kind of looks like heated up metal. This is going to be 1,200 degrees Celsius, which is incredibly hot. I would imagine pure heat would be white and literally blinding. If you want a similar experience, go look up at the sun. Don't do that, that's a joke. And you can get a similar idea of how this works with people wearing welding masks. That's kind of why they do it, it's so they don't burn their retinas out, so the temperature could be as high as that. That's what I'm thinking pure heat would do this. But it's not really the color that we see in game, and it glows like metal and explodes on contact when we parry it or when we launch one of the cores out. What in the world is this weapon? It has a strange description, has one of the most satisfying hits in the entire game. Honestly, the shotgun is one of my favorites. But why does it explode? How, how does heat go kaboom? This is one of the weirdest descriptions in the entire game. I'd rather it be some kind of new shot and has some kind of expansion property. So let's say the weapon isn't the experimental part, it's the shot itself. So the heat generated from the cores might heat up this weapon and that could be our missing piece. In reality, it might actually be a rail weapon, similar to how the piercer is, a sort of fork of this sort of weapons, except the shot is a lot larger and it has a lot more destructive power. I'm gonna say it's around the size of a modern slug and this being heated up is actually what makes it interesting. Let's say it's some kind of perforation lines around the shot that makes it turn from a slug into a sort of bird shot or buck shot. This is why you see so much spread. It's just not that refined yet. It's just getting taken out by air resistance and it's still in experimental phases. Heat can be generated through a couple means, but I think it's just induction. It doesn't require physical touch, which is a lot a lot more useful, and it's actually magnets somehow heating up an object. Basically, you use an electromagnet to heat up an object. That problem is more or less solved. The shot is the experimental part. It goes and becomes birdshot whenever it's heated up. Maybe the material in between the perforations is what is actually being heated up. We have materials such as gallium, which liquefy at basically above room temperature. Seriously, it's one of the most interesting materials that I've ever seen, and it's a metal. 
It's super interesting, but this is only half of the equation. Where does the explosive potential come from? I'm thinking this is using an explosive compound of some sort, and it's the hardest part to describe about this. When parried or a core is launched, it explodes on contact. What's weirder is how explosions don't look like this in real life, but I know this is a game, etc., etc. It's basically what an explosion is, is when you have so much energy within a small space, it creates an outward expanding force. But Explosions can be made in a few different ways. Chemical, nuclear, and magnetic are the most common, and a lot of those aren't what we're seeing in game. The closest thing I can see is a sort of chemical explosion. It's more like a blowback force rather than something that you might see from a nuclear explosion or something from a magnetic explosion. But we're honestly not seeing any of that, so we're, we're gonna say it's a chemical explosion, which is the only real way that this could explode like how we see in game. The explosive shots are gonna be really interesting. Let's say that the explosive shots are kind of separate or that the weapon itself the shot within it has the explosive compound, but due to it not being agitated enough by the weapon, it doesn't really do the whole explosion thing. And what's really strange to me is how the core eject works. Like I understand that a shot could explode if you put some kind of compound on top of it and you just fire it so fast that it hits an object. We have these in real life. They're red or yellow tipped and are really easy to produce. I'm not gonna show you how because YouTube will hate me. And also I don't wanna go into the really depth chemistry. This is meant to be like a lot of like just engineering concepts coming together to make us understand how a weapon could work. But how do the cores work? I think that the cores are honestly more of a heating apparatus. It's more of something that you might see with a water cooling system or something within your computer where you have, you know, your fans, right? That's a cooling apparatus. Most of the time you, you use copper. What I'm seeing on the outside is this sort of dithering effect, like a sort of air or liquid coolant. I feel like that's really, really useful because heat in chemistry makes reactions go really, really quickly. And if you add a catalyst, on top of that, it goes even quicker, but we're only using heat in this example. So having to cool it down is actually fairly realistic. Opening up the weapon is the more odd part. I feel like a, just like a cooling port or something would be a lot more efficient, but uh, it's it's a cool looking weapon. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna lie. But maybe the cores itself, the actual cores have some kind of coolant liquid in it or some kind of coolant paste. Whenever you put on like a new cooler or whatever, it has a sort of coolant paste. Let's say that this is a new type of coolant that when well, you shoot an explosive at it, it kind of goes kaboom. So the cores itself are being launched out, but the stuff inside of it is really volatile. And when you hit it just right, it goes and makes a big explosion and a horrible mess. But I love this weapon and it could definitely use a sort of different sort of description. Heat is a really interesting concept for this weapon and a new shotgun based off the old piercer design, I feel like has more world building and more like lore implications rather than, oh yeah, this weapon makes heat and somehow shoots it out. So I've done a little bit of tinkering with the description. I'm going to make something that fits a little bit better, still hits the lore that it's going for, but isn't completely breaking our physics. The weapon itself is not the sort of experimental part. It's actually the shot being fired. It requires some kind of simple cooling apparatus where it heats up certain parts. Each part of this projectile has the sort of flanged sort of materials coming off of a central bolt. This is accelerated through magnets. That's how it actually launches it. And when the cores heat up, its internal capacity and internal chambers are heated up to such a degree to where the liquid in between the sort of steel parts is liquefied. It's getting hot enough to where it doesn't liquefy the steel, but it's hot enough to where it liquefies this new material in between it. On top of that, the coolant cores, I'm gonna call them coolant cores because they're more used for coolant than making heat, honestly, has a liquid or other sort of paste that is explosive when shot. This is a really cool weapon design and I honestly love the weapons in this game and how none of them really have limited ammo. But the pump action shotgun is just 
it opens up a breach. Basically, we have something similar to a SPAS-12, where the SPAS-12 is a semi-auto shotgun, but it can be turned into a full-auto shotgun if you really want, or a pump action. They're kind of a little bit rarer, but it's uh, sort of like you hit a button on the bottom of it and it just opens up to being a pump action shotgun. This allows you to fire multiple shots, which makes it more damaging, like how we see within game. I feel like this description works a lot better with our physics and what could actually happen if we tried to make it. I hope you enjoyed that, and I wanted to thank everybody for honestly the big amount of support, and I hope we can make this channel get even bigger as time goes on. I've posted one video, and um, you, you people are insane. That's all I'm gonna say, but uh, thank you for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, and uh, yeah, next time we'll do uh, another weapon. See you later.